This kind of polarization, conservatives hate women, liberals eat babies, is bad. This kind of polarization is good. Greetings, filter freaks, and welcome to Pro Photo Tips. My name is Josh Cripps, and you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Joshua Cripps Photography. You'll often hear that a circular polarizing filter, or a CPL, is a must-have addition to your gear bag. But once you've got one, how do you use it to get the best possible results? First, let's start with what a polarizer does. A CPL blocks scattered light from entering your camera, reducing haze in your photos, increasing color saturation, and giving the sky a royal blue hue. Polarizers also cut reflections off of wet and metallic surfaces, giving plants and rocks increased clarity and color saturation, and letting you see under the surface of lakes and streams. The effect is almost magical. But as cool as CPLs can be, don't fall into the trap of thinking you need to use one all the time, because they also have their quirks. First of all, it's critical to understand that a polarizer works best when you're pointed 90 degrees away from the sun, and it doesn't work at all when you're pointed either directly at or directly away from the sun. And this is important for a couple of reasons. One, it means your CPL might not be doing anything at all for you. For example, if you're shooting directly into the sun at sunset, so you might as well take it off. It also means that if you're shooting with a wide angle lens, you might have part of the frame where the polarization effect is strong and another part of the frame where the polarization effect is weak, which is why sometimes you can see uneven color tone in the sky like this. However, one of the nice things about a CPL is that it's not an all or nothing filter. Rather, you can turn it to adjust how strong you want the effect to be. Want your sky super dark? Well, twist the filter to max polarization. Too much? Just dial it back a little. You can also fix that uneven polarization problem by not using as wide of a lens, like in that previous example, or by making sure your sky is full of clouds so as to break up the polarization effect. Another key thing to realize about polarizers is that they eat light. Most polarizers, when they're turned to their strongest effect, suck up about two stops of light, which means you'll need to change your camera settings in order to compensate for that. The final consideration you should bear in mind when using a polarizer is if it even fits your artistic intention. While reduced haze and boosted color saturation are almost always a good thing, you might be willing to let those go if it means keeping that amazing reflection you've got on the surface of a lake. In the end, a CPL is a fantastic filter to have in your kit, and now that you know more about them, you can put yours to good use. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends and give it a thumbs up. You can also join our newsletter for the latest photography tips. And if you'd like to learn more about essential filters for landscape photography, be sure to check out this video. Until next time, have fun and happy shooting. Come on, wind. Stop being so windy. Oh, come on. Seriously? Every time the sun comes back out, a car drives by. Stop it. Stop. Stop. Why do they do that to me? Uh.